Zany friends, I'm Lainey. And I'm Marshall. And today we're going to tell you what to do if you've been demonetized by YouTube. Uh, I do want to start this video by saying that the reason why we wanted to bring you this information was because the, the day that everybody got their emails, I received so many private messages of, I'm defeated, I don't even want to do this anymore, why is this happening? And I wanted to bring a video to kind of tell everybody so I didn't have to spend three hours messaging people back <laughs> about it. Um, that's one of it. But the other is of it is that, um, and I, I'm really sorry if you feel offended by this video, I'm just gonna put this up front. I'm going to be very blunt and honest about what I feel about this. So if you are offended by anything that I say, please take it as I'm doing this for to, or we are doing this to help you move past it in a positive way. We are not doing it to say you are wrong to feel the way you feel. No. You are perfectly right to feel the way you feel. But we are trying to give you perspective of the grand scheme of things in your life and not have you fixate on the minuscule details of what is happening mm -hmm. so that you feel like your life is over. Okay, so that's just <laughs> basically what we're you, doing. You are welcome to feel however you want. We're gonna just try and arm you for your future. Exactly. So a little bit of background. Why did YouTube do this? Okay, there has been a lot of controversies about various YouTubers and YouTube videos that have gone out. The most recent one being the Logan Paul controversy. Mm -hmm. um, and. The unfortunate side of it is YouTube does a lot of its stuff through algorithms because there's so much content coming out that it's really difficult to have a single person go and watch it all mm -hmm. and figure out if this is something that the marketers actually want to talk about. Mm -hmm. So they were using these algorithms and people would slip through because they were getting really popular and it was talking about popularity first. Mm -hmm. So. Once you have that happening, all the marketers, all the all the advertisers are like, I, I don't want to be associated with these videos and I can't tell if I'm going to, so I'm not going to work with YouTube. And then of course, once YouTube gets its advertising dollars pulled, it freaks out, mm -hmm. <laughs> basically, and says, okay, well, we have to be drastic. And so they have decided that anybody who, in a, like you have in a year, you have to have uh, 400,000 hours of view time on your channel and you have to have a thousand subscribers. Now, let me give you five points of perspective as to what is happening about this and how you should maybe look at it from another point of view, especially if you are super upset about it. The first point I want to make is you can probably are saying, well, Lainey, how does this affect you? Uh, I got demonetized too, okay? Mm -hmm. And let me tell you how how it happened for me. I was, I am $10 away from cashing out from my next paycheck. I have only cashed out once ever. I've been on YouTube for four years. I do not have the amount of hours watched that I need. I do have the subs, but it took me two years to get to that point. Um, the and, and honestly, that's just because people don't watch us. They can't find us. I don't know why. It's not that we don't do quality stuff. But this this whole situation, and I will probably talk about this later, but this whole situation basically turned me around to a new way of thinking as far as what we're going to do on our channel. Again, we'll talk about that later. Mm -hmm. But yes, I was demonetized. And although demonetization doesn't happen until February, I don't think I'm going to make enough money to cash out that other hundred dollars. Okay, so we're talking for me, this is a hundred dollar problem. All right, but I'm still not angry. All right, still not. Number two, let's think about the fact that when I first started YouTube, um, the first time I was on YouTube, I started it eight years ago. Um, and I did a couple reviews on YouTube. And then I restarted it like with the focus about four years ago, mm -hmm. four years ago. YouTube never used to pay people to do their, you had to have a thousand subscribers. You had to have a certain amount of watch time views before they would even pay you. But out of the goodness of their heart, YouTube decided that they were actually going to pay the smaller YouTubers for doing this. And now people got so used to having that money that they were like up in arms about the fact that they weren't getting it anymore. And to me, it really is a privilege. It's a privilege because you need to be a marketer for YouTube. They are paying you to be their marketing. 
so that the advertisers are paying them to facilitate that marketing. If you throw some video up there, like, hey guys, I'm showing you how I get drunk on a Friday night, and then are really pissed off about the fact that you're getting demonetized, you might want to step back and go, am I really professional as a marketer or am I just doing this for my own good? Think of it from the business perspective. You have to think of this as a content creator. You have to create content that you think people will want to watch mm -hmm. and will want to bring other people to watch because then the marketers want to work with you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so think of it as you need to treat this, if you really want to be paid for it, you need to treat it as a business. Mm -hmm. We'll talk more about that later. But number three, so what happens when YouTube is totally gone? Like, I mean, I'm not saying that this is what's happening right now, but what happens if YouTube is totally gone? Um, some people are saying, well, you know, we need other platforms to step up and show that YouTube is not the big giant that they seem to be. That is never going to happen, guys. Like I'm telling you, Google owns YouTube. Google is not going to be taken down, especially by Amazon, because Amazon is not stupid. They're not doing what YouTube does. They're doing their own thing. They're doing a subscription service. And they yes, they just decided that they were going to put up, um, they bought out some web domains like um, Amazon Tube, and I can't remember what all the other ones were. Yes, they are getting ready to do their own similar content created platform, but whether they're going to pay you for it, who knows? Yeah. Google owns the largest search engine in the world, and YouTube is that. A lot of what's going on with this is actually a course correction. They're attempting to fix the problem, so they can they need to be able to focus their resources on fixing it. And in order to do that, they can't have such a broad platform for advertising. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna need to focus on those people that are going to get them the ad dollars and make sure that their algorithms work for them. Mm -hmm. um, my number four point is that YouTube is a business, do you make it money? We kind of talked about this already, that it does pay you for marketing. Um, but again, that's something that you do need to think about. You know, are you fully doing this? Because if you are, or if you have the mindset of, I am a marketer, I'm a content creator, therefore people are going to be wanting to watch me, therefore I'm making YouTube money, therefore they can pay me. You gotta think of it that way. It's not an entitlement. Um, as, as much as I wanna say, I have put all this, all of this, into doing YouTube, I deserve to be paid. I do deserve to be paid, but maybe not by YouTube. And we're gonna talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. So number five, maybe it's temporary. Once they fix their <laughs> algorithms, they might just let it be open to everybody again. Not to mention, they just came out a couple days ago and said that they were hiring people to manually go through these videos and find out if they were questionable or not. Man, I should So you that. don't, I mean, that's a lot of jobs and I'm, I'm okay with that. But maybe all this is temporary, and that means that you probably don't need to be as upset about things as you are, <laughs> you know? I'm, like I said, I'm going to just be blunt with you. I don't know if this is something that, that you guys need to be that mad about. Instead of blaming YouTube, let's blame the content creators who did us a disservice. Yeah. Okay? Like, let's blame them. YouTube legitimately did this as, you know, a gut gut move. Like, let's, let's just, you know, fix it. Um, did they do it the wrong way? Absolutely they did it the wrong way. Did we see this coming for months? Absolutely. And we've been telling you on this channel they were going to do it, too. So if you watched any of our old videos about, like, you know, how to monetize and whatnot, we told you that this was going to happen. But that doesn't mean that it's a good thing. It's not. We totally understand that, okay? So now let's talk about what can you do in order to move forward from all of this and, and not have it affect you so bad. Let's put this into perspective one more time. Bonus perspective. How much are you really making from YouTube? I personally, it takes me two years to make $100. That is like one one thousandth of a cent per hour with the amount of time that I actually put into YouTube, that we put into YouTube, it is not minimum wage. And unless you are graveyard girl, you're probably not making that much money. 
uh, from YouTube. So the fact that they are taking away a $25, $50 a year money, like that's a dinner out. <laughs> like, like I, I get it. It's the principle of it. I get it. But are we really getting this upset over $25? That, that fifty dollars that I could smack down and buy a pallet with, like, like that, that's that's really the the irateness I'm getting from some people on Facebook. That I'm just like, I am floored by how people are this angry over a couple dollars, really. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's now talk about what you can do with your time that will give you more money than YouTube. All right. So my first tip for you is, do not quit. Don't do it. Why? Because all these other people that are mad, that aren't watching this video, that aren't getting perspective, they will quit. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Then the market won't be as oversaturated and people will find you better. So yay, don't quit. Not <laughs> only that, if this is a temporary thing, and we really think it is a temporary thing, as soon as they come back, as soon as YouTube allows everybody to get monetized again, all those people that quit aren't getting paid. You are already in a prime position to get paid. Use that opportunity to just really think about where you want your channel to go. So this is number two. This is used to be our motto mm -hmm. on this channel. It's do what you love and build your community. That is the only way that you are going to move forward from this. If you aren't doing YouTube because you love doing YouTube and you like connecting to people, then it's going to be harder for you. You know, if you only did YouTube to make money, I don't really know what your expectations are about that because you don't make money from YouTube. Even big YouTubers don't necessarily make money from YouTube. They don't. So in the meantime, what do you do? You just do the videos that you want to do and you connect with other people. Really, like, mm -hmm. reach out through the camera and be there for those people and you will slowly build your community of people that will watch you no matter what. Number three, research research, build better content, and focus. Because when, yes. when we are dealing with now everything is getting a little bit more condensed, you're going to want to take this time to build your content into something better so that people will pay more attention to you when everybody comes flooding back. For us, especially, we are using this time to really think about the content we're putting out. Maybe not putting out as many videos, but we're going to do different types of videos. We want to do more vlogging videos. We want to be more direct about our planner videos. The makeup videos that we do may be a little less because guess what? Everyone is doing makeup videos. Everyone is. So why would they try to find ours if everyone else is doing it? What is it that makes us that special besides the fact that there's a guy and a girl doing this? I don't know. That kind of gives us into number four, which is giving people a value and giving it your own twist. So not only are you researching everything, you want to go out there and see what videos are being made and you want to do it differently. You want to see what tips people are giving, what research other people are doing in the market in your niche and do that. Okay. You don't have to invest in a lot of equipment. You can use your phone. You can, you know, try to edit it yourself. Give yourself some good lighting, but really think about what it is that you're doing. Are you putting something out there that someone is like, I'm excited to watch you? Or are you like, mm, I've seen that before. Okay. If they've seen that before, that's probably why you're not getting views. Um, and, and we're trying to take that to heart as well. Are we doing things that other people are doing? If yes, then we're going to do something different. That also does get into some of the other points there, because uh, if you are doing proper research, you're going to be giving people better value. And that also gets into our next point. Mm -hmm. So they, they're, I still want to go back to your own twist. Yeah. Okay. So for instance, if you are a a beauty person, and I'm only doing that because I'm in a community with a lot of other beauty people, and you are doing a declutter video, which are very, very popular, do not get me wrong, um, but let's say, how are you going to make that declutter video you? How are you going to make it different from all the other ones out there? Um, for us, like maybe our declutter is because I have a guy's point of view, so I have that little extra twist to beauty that a lot of other people do not have. You know, um, for our travel vlogs, I live in Orlando. Not a lot of people live in Orlando. They want to come here. So maybe I will be doing my travel vlogs of, these are some cheap things that you can do in Orlando and just have as much fun as everyone else that's out there coming here, spending thousands of dollars on a trip. 
you know, so those kind of things, how you organize and plan and get your way out there, things that are helpful to people. Number five, this is probably the one you're all waiting for, how do you make the monies? Mm -hmm. Diversify, all right? If YouTube were to crash tomorrow, what would it be that would give you the opportunity to make more money? So I have a couple of suggestions here, okay. right? So the first one would be sponsors. And I know you're not, Lainey, I'm not big enough for sponsors. That is incorrect. You're not big, you may not be big enough to get sponsors from like Famebit or something like that because you don't have the views. But I know people who have 200 subscribers and they have been sponsored. Sponsored, by the way, is not giving product for review. Sponsored means they are paying you mm -hmm. to do a vlog or they're paying you to put stuff on Instagram. It's actual money changing hands. Um, you can get product for review as well. That is just as fine. But you have to do the work. You have to go out there and make a press kit, which we also have a video on that if you want to see how to make a press kit. Go out there, send your press kit out, and almost like you're going on an interview or an audition. Just keep putting it out there, and eventually somebody will bite. Okay, it happens. I've seen it happen. I personally have had like maybe one sponsored thing, but I like to rely on the other methods we're going to talk about. Okay, so number two, sell a product or a service. All right, what does that mean? Well, we're doing it. <laughs> we're, we made our own wax company. We're selling a product. Um, a service would be, do you have an ebook? Do you do seminars on something that's in your niche? Uh, do you uh, do consulting? Like these are only small examples of things that you can charge money for that will make you more money than YouTube and take up less of your time than YouTube does. And you can use YouTube as a jumping off platform to advertise what you do. In fact, many of the big YouTubers that I watch, they aren't monetized at all on their channels mm -mm. because they are using that as marketing for their product. This mm -hmm. is free content to get you interested in me and what I'm doing, would you like to buy what I'm doing? Exactly. Um, that also gives us to multiple platforms. It is, like I said, YouTube is not going anywhere, but if you put your video, like a mini video on Facebook, if you put a video on like Twitch now that they are expanding, or the new Amazon, these are things that get yourself out there so that you can make money from your products your services, all that jazz. And if they start to monetize, all the better for you. It's a lot of different areas you're drawing from. And also you want to make sure that you take advantage of the services that are offered by these platforms. So many times uh, you can see that these YouTubers are getting money from live videos that allow people to donate. Mm -hmm. This way you're getting a lot of money for spending a couple hours of your time building your community. Exactly. They can do the super chats uh, through uh, through YouTube. Also, if you're on um, uh, Periscope, mm -hmm. Periscope just started doing super chats too, but I heard they that Periscope's going down for some reason. And Twitch has yeah. been doing it for a long time. Exactly. Too. So you can do, and it's very much like Patreon, like you could do stuff like that, you know, whatever. You're offering a value that people want to pay for. So that's what you should think about. The very last one is one that we've been using forever and that's affiliate links. So for example, if you're an Amazon affiliate and you put a link to an Amazon product down in your blog or your uh, YouTube, which I heard is now not allowed, but we will check on that for you. Um, and they click over, you will get a percentage of that sale over on Amazon. So it, it is definitely worth it to get in with these different affiliate companies because you can get paid for things that you recommend and that is money coming in as well. So that is different ways that you can make money. That was the fifth thing. I do have some an, a bonus one for you of how to move forward, um, which you should be doing anyway, whether you're doing YouTube, Facebook, or Instagram, yeah. you need to comment on other people's stuff, okay? So if, if there is someone that you watch all the time, go ahead and drop a comment below. Don't just like, because what that does is that person will be like, oh, 
I'm noticing this person comments and because of that other people are seeing that you comment and they're gonna want to click on you and be like oh who is this person I'm starting to see them a lot so then they'll find you through that you want to engage so if someone comments on your video you're gonna want to comment back or on Instagram that same thing that'll actually help with your algorithm it will boost you up a lot better if you are commenting and engaging back and forth um, I do have a story I don't know if you guys know Andrea Martellano on YouTube I would comment on all of her videos I love her to death I think she's great um, so I used to comment on all of her videos and she actually wrote me an email and said thank you so much for what you're doing to support and she sent me this little like gift of she sent me a palette that I had commented on in the video just just because she's that nice and that is kind of a, one example of someone who saw someone being different and commenting outside of themselves very nice things and really supporting other youtubers to build that community okay so that is a, just a little bit of a positivity for you that it is qu like almost a quid pro quo in a way because you're doing something for someone else but it will come back to you kind of karma um do not sub for sub guys because youtube will ban you <laughs> do yeah. not do it all right so in summary be different mm -hmm. that's that's what i can tell you it, it will do nothing for you if you get so down that you cannot move forward anymore. You might as well give up. But we're telling you, you don't have to. This is a totally workable situation. It really is. And if you're looking for a community of people that will really help you, whether it's emotionally or with your technical crap or whatever it is that you're dealing with, we have a community down below called Geeks and Beauties, which is just that. It's for people who do YouTube videos and Instagram posts and blogs to come together and really help each other build them up, okay? So especially in this time period, this is very, very important. These people are going to be the ones that watch your videos. Mm -hmm. These people are going to be the ones that buy your products. I swear to you, yeah. all of our customers are <laughs> from this group, but I'm slowly building more from other groups. Mm -hmm. The other thing that goes along with this YouTube demonetization, something that applies in your real life. If all of your joy, if all of your peace is found in your situations and in the actions of others, you will never have any. If you look inside yourself, Find your own joy. Find what makes you happy and how you can build into other people with that. You will have joy. You will have peace. And you will probably have monetization when it comes back. Mm -hmm. That's probably why this whole thing didn't really phase us very much. It's like, you know, we've been struggling for so long to get views. And there are times where we're like, why is this not working? But we feel that you know, we kind of believe in a bigger picture and a bigger plan. So we know that even though we're putting it out there, it's every step folds into another. If I hadn't done YouTube, then I would not be meeting people that I know right now, which means I would not have built a community, which means I wouldn't be building this business, and which means I would not be growing as much as we are. Money has nothing to do with it. If money is the, the most important thing in your life right now, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry. Um, I'm not trying to tell you what you need to believe in. And again, we're not trying to tell you how you should feel. But, you know, this is it's really just trying to encourage and be more positive about the situation. This world is crappy. You're alive. And if you have your family, if you have friends, if you have things that you hold dear, hold on to that. Grow that. Mm -hmm. okay, don't worry about the money. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging with us this long. Um, I, I was a little like, <clears throat> I was a little fired up about all of this when it first happened. Not for the reason that you think. Um, and I was like, I really just have to put this video out. I need to tell these people that this is this is not a dire situation that's happening right now. I really, I really have to do this. So that's why we decided to put out this video. I will put a playlist up here of just some random videos if you want to watch it. And then um, right here if you want to subscribe because we want to help you. That's what our community is. It's helping people whether it is with your content or the way you smell. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, thank you for watching today and until next time. Stay zany. Bye-bye.